All right, so you want to learn how to construct the perfect workout. Well, let's hop right into it. You're in the right place. Okay, so when it comes to making a workout, it, there's more to it than just running into the gym, hopping on a few machines, pumping out a few reps with the dumbbells, and, and leaving. If you do that, you're not gonna see a lot of results. So I'm gonna take you through the way to strategically create a workout that's gonna provide you actual results and get you guys way bigger, way faster. So the first step, and this is a step that I see so many guys skipping, and this is a huge reason why you're not seeing a lot of your gains, it's the warm up, and I mean proper warm up. All right, I don't mean hop on the treadmill for five minutes and then go throw 225 on and start squatting. That's a recipe to get injured. When I say proper warm up, this is what I mean. Three to five minutes on the treadmill, the bike, something to get your blood flowing. And once we've got that flowing, then we're gonna go into some dynamic stretching and foam rolling. So foam rolling, this helps crack them, you know, crack your back and stuff like that, but it also helps kind of mobilize the muscle. It's waking them up, it's causing blood flow to the area, and it's helping roll out some of the knots in the muscles, essentially loosening them up so they're ready for that dynamic stretching that comes next. Now dynamic stretching is different than static stretching. Static stretching is that stretching where you're laying there, you're holding a position for a long time. This will lull the muscle into this kind of false sense of security. If you're about to go do a big workout, you don't want your muscle falling asleep. You want it to be woken up. You want it to be active and ready to go. So that's why we're using dynamic in the warm-up section. Now, these are a lot, there's a lot of different dynamic warm-ups, um, and there's a bajillion moves you can use. You want to use ones that are going to be moving the joints that you're going to be using in the workout. So if you're doing legs, you want to be doing movements around your hip joint, your knee joint. If you're doing you know, back and biceps, you wanna be doing stuff with your shoulder blades that are allowing your arms to warm up. Um, I've thrown a few examples up on the screen of some of the ones that I tend to use, but anything along these lines are gonna help you get the blood flowing to the specific regions you want in a way that allows the, uh, the muscles, the joints, and the connective tissue in that area to be warmed up properly. So once you've done all that, now we're ready to hop into the workout. Okay, so you've warmed up, you're loose, you're limber, you're ready to go. What the heck do I do now? This is why well, I see a lot of guys' faces. They'll come in, deer in the headlights, looking around like, okay, um, well, that's open. I'll go hop on that. They don't even know what day they're doing. So if you don't have that down, I advise you to go back, watch some of my previous videos on splits and different ways to organize your week. But if you have that down and you're just looking to build workouts now, you need to understand the basics of a workout. Here's the basic progression. You've got your heaviest, most compounded lifts at the beginning. These are your things like your squats, your deadlifts, your benches. Depending on what day it is, you wanna place one of those at the beginning and hit it hard with the most intensity. It's gonna challenge it to grow in strength. It's gonna challenge it to grow in size. And it's gonna challenge it in endurance. If you can nail those down and you can hit that set really well, that is the meat and potatoes of the workout. So that is our heavy set. And I like to have one initial heavy exercise and I aim for around 20 to 25 reps and you break that up over any amount of reps and sets you like. The highest I like to go is three sets of eight all the way down to 10 sets of two with any increment in between being accessible as well. Four sets of six, six sets of four, three sets of seven, you name it. You can mix it up to help you adapt your workouts and make them a little more interesting but essentially you're aiming for a heavy heavy load for that 24 there's 20 to 25 rep range. Okay, now that you've nailed down your heavy set, your muscles are pretty shot already. Now's where we wanna really knock the wind out of them. Take everything and just start squeezing it out. These are the moderate sets. You can still use free weights here. Um, you can start throwing in some cables as well. Um, but I like to do one to two to even three exercises here to really bang out the volume. So here we're gonna lower the weight a little bit and then up the repetition. So here I aim for eight to 12 reps using a bit of a more moderate weight. You still wanna be coming close to failure at the end of each exercise, but it's not going to be as heavy as the initial one. You're gonna be getting more reps, more blood volume. This is gonna stretch the muscle out a little bit more, and this is where we really get that hypertrophy or the simple getting bigger muscles effect. Only then are we going to hit a finisher exercise. These are exercises that you'll commonly see on Instagram. Some people will make entire workouts up out of these, and this is not going to work because these sets don't apply all those principles I just talked to you about. They're not gonna lead to enough stimulus for your muscle to grow, but they're great at the end of the workout. 
as your muscle gets more and more tired, we need to aid it with more and more stability. So let's say bench press, for example. When you're doing a barbell bench press, your muscle's fresh, so it can handle all the instability with a heavy load and no extra assistance. It's just a free weight barbell and your raw strength. As it gets more tired, we move into more stable positions, moving into some lighter dumbbell work, and then we move into machine or cable work where the apparatus is set up to help us control the load. At the very, very end, our muscles are gonna be shot. So if we were gonna go back and do some kind of heavy free weight exercise, you're really risking injury here. Instead, you wanna do what I call a metabolic set, which is a set that challenges the total endurance of the muscle and the blood flow it can handle. These, these are the ones that burn. I'm talking doing 20, 30 reps of a couple different moves here. For chest, it might be like doing cable flies from low to high to medium to high to low and then dropping down and banging out as many push-ups as you can until your chest just can't handle it anymore. That's the finisher. So when you start with the heavy, you do one exercise that's meant to be heavy, you move down into the moderate, that's the bulk of your exercises, and then you end with a finisher, and that's where that metabolic stress comes in, that stress that really ends it all. Okay, now, there are some things we can add in that you'll hear a lot of in the gym. We can add these to our moderate sets and even to our, um, the end of our heavy set and our finishers especially, there's some common terms. I'm gonna give you examples of them here. So uh, number one is drop sets. This is a great way to add in a little extra effort to a set while protecting yourself from injury. Let's say you're getting towards the end of an exercise and you're getting to the point where your form starts to break down. Instead of trying to cheat out the extra reps, take some of the weight off, thereby lightening the load, and continue to bang out a couple extra reps. It's gonna allow you to get more reps than you would have if you stuck with the same weight, and it makes it easier on your joints so you're not cheating, you're actually working the muscle out harder. Supersets, now these are oftentimes like misnamed. People will call compound sets, which I'll tell you about in a second, supersets. A superset is where we perform an exercise for one muscle, and then an exercise for its opposite muscle right afterwards. So when we superset something like this example, I'll throw on the screen now, I'm doing bicep curls to start, and then once I've burned out the bicep, I'm supersetting it with triceps. Now, there's a special relationship between these two because they move the elbow joint in its, op in its opposing directions. The bicep curls the elbow joint and the tricep extends it. Um, so you can actually get a greater effect, a greater muscle growth effect, by supersetting them together because you prime the other one to activate when you're working its opposite. I know it's a little complex, uh, but think of it this way. As you're pumping up your bicep, you're priming your tricep to contract stronger. So if we take advantage of that, then you get a crazy tricep pump when you superset it with that bicep workout. The, the way that you'll most commonly see people say superset, they really mean compound set. That is when you combine two exercises for the same muscle group back to back with no rest. So let's say that I am doing those bicep curls again. As I'm curling that weight and I'm coming towards failure, instead of cheating or instead of there, you know, going and performing a drop set, what I'll do is I'll have some dumbbells or something nearby and I'll put down the one exercise, I'll pick up the dumbbells and I'll complete a secondary exercise. And this is usually at a lighter weight, but it allows me to continue the set, get more fatigue in the muscle and thereby generate some more growth in the muscle. All right, the last one you'll hear is giant sets. And I guess you can probably guess where this is going. A giant set is just when you take a compound set or a super set past using just two exercises. It's when you stack three, four, I've never seen it before, maybe even five exercises together um, to get a huge, huge metabolic pump. And this is what you see most commonly in finisher sets. For the shoulders, I'll do these where I'll do uh, like front raises, lateral raises, and rear raises all back and forth together. But there's many different ways you can incorporate these. And it's great for a finisher because it's basically taking any last bit of energy and strength you have in the muscle and using it up in this giant one last hurrah set. Okay, so now that you've warmed up properly, you've hammered out a perfect workout, and you've used every last bit of energy you can, it's time to go home, right? Well, not quite. If you wanna get the absolute most out of your workout, then I can guarantee you, you're leaving 10 to 20% on the door if you're not cooling down properly. Cooling down is gonna flush the lactic acid, which is that buildup, that burn you get in the muscle. It's actual acid in your muscle. If you don't flush it out, the muscle doesn't recover as well and you don't get as much growth. So, how do we flush it out with a proper cool down? 
I'm here to tell you. Number one, we want to go back to those dynamic movements. Now this can be through those same dynamic movements you use to warm up. We can use them to cool down now. Or you can go back to, say, the bike. Do something to move the body, calm down the heart rate, and let that lactic acid flush out of the body while still moving. If we go static right away and we don't move, then the lactic acid sits there. But if we move around for five to 10 minutes and we flush it out, you're gonna get such better growth. And then it's time to stretch. Devote five to 10 minutes to stretching the muscles that you worked that day after the workout. Let's say you did a back and a biceps day. Spend five minutes stretching out your back, stretching out your biceps, aiming to get a little more flexible in them. A more flexible muscle is gonna be a healthier, stronger, and larger muscle. Because if you're stretching it right after a workout, you're going to increase those little micro tears and it's going to provide more room for the muscle to grow. So if you combine all of this together, I guarantee you guys are going to not only be scientifically ahead of your peers, but you're going to be getting bigger than your peers as well because you're putting the science behind your workouts, you're skipping out on the bro science, you're going right to the hardcore facts, and you're giving yourself the best chance to be the biggest bodybuilder you can be. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped you out. If you did, feel free to leave a like down below. Subscribe for more videos every week, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.